Today, we're taking a hard look at the thick king of Polaroid cameras, a beautiful box of bolts called the Polaroid 600 SE. If you don't know, you're about to know. It's goose time. The goose. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben and I sit before you today clasping a monolith in the grand line of Polaroid cameras, the 600 SE, otherwise known as the Goose. the Goose. You can see why it's earned that nickname. It certainly looks like a goose. It has that long neck, beady little eyes, it's covered in feathers, and it intends to angrily chase you around the park and tear you flesh from bone with its jagged beak. This camera is often considered the best Polaroid camera ever made in the sense that it's a truly professional tool with interchangeable lenses, interchangeable film backs, and a modular design that completely sets it apart from most cameras capable of shooting instant film. Dropped from the heavens in 1978, the 600SE and its dumber fixed lens brother, the 600, were initially released to be primarily used with peel apart film. The camera is actually a spin off of the Mamiya Press and it's thanks to this bizarre collaboration that this doinker deluxe exists. In this golden era of instant film history, Polaroid cameras were not only being used for fun and games, snapshots for the haves and have nots, but also by professionals to proof shots and test exposures during motion picture and still photography shoots. Unlike most Polaroid cameras, this block of metal cheese is fully manual. There are no electronics inside. You set the shutter speed and aperture on the leaf shutter lens, cock that shutter, and fire. This lens is one of three compatible Mamiya glass beasts so sharp they could cut Captain America's shield like a hot knife through margarine. The one you're looking at right here is the 127, the most popular choice. Also available are the 75 and 150 millimeter bad boys. Bad boys for life. Your widest aperture on the 127 is f4.7, and while that might not blast your socks to the moon, which has water on it, need I remind you the widest aperture on our beloved SX70 is f8. So you can get some considerably bonkers background separation with the goose. the goose. And what's a little bit strange to get used to at first is the minimum focusing distance of 3.5 feet versus the 10 inch close range of the SX70. So while you can't really get that intimate close up portrait, the 127 millimeter focal length still brings you the head and shoulders look with ridiculous sharpness. We're blowing some of these suckers up for a closer look. I can't stress enough that cameras are just light boxes with a lens. The lens is everything, and this lens is most certainly everything. Do I even need to say it? It's big for business. Shooting instant film on the Goose is truly a large format experience. You are absolutely getting the most out of the film, beyond the quote unquote look of instant film that almost feels kind of weird at first. But film is film. This is just a different perspective than you might be used to uh, for the Polaroid variety. To me, kind of a major caveat with this camera is that with an integral film back, and I'll explain the backs in a second, the light is striking the film directly without any sort of mirror or prism system. Thus, every image is backwards. That's kind of tough in a lot of situations. As you all know, one of my favorite subjects is a good mid-century bit of signage and architecture, so shooting these backwards is kind of silly. And flipping it in post is also kind of silly. I mean, this is Polaroid. You know, the idea is that you, you kind of get what you get and messing with it in post is somewhat antithetical to the spirit of it. Some people might disagree and I'll see you in the alley out back. But for me, the camera just doesn't work for me in some of these key situations. Um, but despite that, it is a dummy thick beauty. So regarding the backs, there are some pretty sick options for this multi-format monster. And one you are most definitely likely interested in is the Integral film back, which shoots SX70, iType, and 600 film. The backs all have their own external power, so you can shoot all three types and the camera has no automatic light meter, there's no automatic exposure, so you can manually meter for both SX70 and 600 without issue. There are a few options for backs with varying costs. Something like the CB70, which was produced by Polaroid, takes DC power, while the ones fashioned from impossible backs are either charged by USB or use AAA batteries. Shout out to AAAs, still killing it after all these years. Now, if you're shooting SuperSense or expired Fuji peel-apart film, most copies of this camera will come with that back already. 
but you can also adapt it to expired 4x5 peel apart film, regular 4x5 film that covers most of the sheet, Instax wide, and even 120 roll film. Now there is some DIYing that you might have to do in order to pull this stuff off, but much like Bradley Cooper, it's kind of limitless. Taking a picture with this chunk is kind of an interesting experience. Like most Polaroid film cameras, the viewfinder is a separate viewing angle from the lens. It's not through the lens like the SX70 or SLR680. But what's truly different here is the rangefinder focusing. There is a dot in the center of the viewfinder which aligns split images, kind of like some SX70 models, and there are also adjustable frame lines because the lens is offset, and the frame lines are not for square, so aligning shots can be a little bit disorienting, but really it's not so bad, and at least you have a center point to work with. Something you may be wondering looking at some of my photos is, why the f my frames are upside down or oriented in landscape? Well, the integral backs for this camera mount in varying ways, but none of them mount so that the frame is oriented traditionally. So I'd have to hold the camera upside down to get a right side up photo. And for some of them, you hold it to the side to get a right side up photo. This kind of doesn't matter to me at all. And I'm kind of enjoying the landscape look of some of these shots. Polaroid square film is technically slightly taller than it is wide, giving it a nice look when shot in landscape. Before I move on, I wanna give a mega massive shout out to the man, Ariel Perez, who sent me his 600 SE before I ultimately went full send and nabbed my own. Very kind gesture, hugely appreciated. He's a very talented photographer. Throw him a follow, handle is right here, or maybe even right here. Thanks again. Um, you now join Jesse Wisdom in the In An Instant Hall of Fame. And also joining the Hall of Fame this week are five folks who came through in the clutch with peel apart film necessary to make this and an episode coming up. These talented folks include Yamin, Chris Visser, Polaroid J, Scott Barnhart, KNR, and Michael McKinnis. And although this episode is coming out around Thanksgiving, I will be thankful for all of you forever. I love you and I'm in love with you. I ended up buying this camera because I love the results, but before you bum rush eBay, you should consider the massive differences between using this and any other type of Polaroid point shoot camera. For example, if you don't wanna manually meter every single shot, this camera might not be for you. It absolutely requires an external light meter, and you, know, you could use an app, but that's imprecise, and you really need to nail exposures with the reduced latitude of Polaroid film. It's also a big chungus, perhaps the least discreet camera I own besides my cinema cameras. Uh, you're really lugging this thing around and it feels like cool to have walking around with, but it's just not for everyone. Um, if you've used large format cameras or fully manual medium format cameras, this is giving you that similar slow photography style of shooting. Every shot really takes a minute. So while I wouldn't bring this thing out just any old day. I personally love how it makes me think about what I'm doing. You really just build a personal connection to it. I mean, it's gonna be hard to send this back to Ariel, to Ariel. All right, enough, pros and cons time. Pros, the interchangeable gobsmacking glass lenses are perhaps the best you can functionally use with an integral film camera. It's fully manual. This allows you to precisely shape your photo from exposing exactly the way you want to getting creative with shutter speeds. Something you just simply cannot do on unmodified Polaroid cameras. And it's modular. The fact that you can shoot on many formats with one camera is absolutely hype. Entirely hype. Cons, it's enormous. This uh, camera is not convenient thing to walk around with at all. Price, the camera ranges from $200 to $700, depending on what back you start with and how smart you are at buying things. And reversed images. Having backwards prints isn't a dagger in every situation, but anything from text on clothing to flipped signage and faces can pose problems. So something to keep in mind. While I'll stop myself from rambling any further, you will no doubt see the goose, the goose. in future episodes doing any number of the dope tricks the 600 SE is capable of. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and peck that subscribe button with your goose-like beak. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant.